I think a lot of questions were how far can we push it? Mm. In other words, I told you about that low grade cancer. Can we push it to higher grades and start watching those because we might be over treating those? Welcome, Dr. Daniel Lin. How Thanks. are you? Great. Welcome great. to Vegas. I <laughs> yeah, know. Great. It's great to be here. Great to have the AUA here this year. Well, and you're probably feeling a little sense of relief because you did your speech already, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Talk went fine. I mean, the plenary talks, they do such a great job. Getting keeping us on time, you look out there, there's, you know, a few thousand people there, so it you, went well. You started us off, right? Right. Uh, Happy to do it. Exactly. So, yeah. and obviously, it's a very important subject that you're talking about. So, I think everyone was very eager to learn about this. But I'm curious. You've been building this evidence-based um, uh, active surveillance for several years now. So, how long and what has been your vision throughout this whole process? Sure. We started like 2007, 2008. So, it's mm -hmm. been 16 years. Um, when we formed the group, our goal was to say, okay, there are these low-risk prostate cancer patients. Some of them don't do really well over time. In other words, they look like they're well-behaved, but they do worse later. And our entire goal was to find new biomarkers, so new tests, whether that's imaging tests or blood tests or tissue tests, to really find those people. Okay. So we started this out as a discovery effort to develop new tests. But what we found out, interestingly, is that we're going to use this cohort that we've developed to learn more about the natural history of how these people behave. Because unfortunately, we haven't found great biomarkers, but in the process, we've learned a lot about prostate cancer that, again, looks like it's a turtle on the block yeah. and how they progress over time. With that, what is that teaching us about active surveillance? Yeah, sure. Well, it's safe. I think okay. if I had to have, have one take-home point, it appears that if you have a man on active surveillance, and you follow him with biopsies, regular biopsies, and PSA tests, mm -hmm. that the chance of missing a cancer that's overly aggressive is low. So the chance of having metastatic disease is low. We're talking like 1%, okay. liter literally 1%. So we know the first thing it teaches us is it's safe. Okay. That's like, I think, the overriding take home point. It's safe as long as you follow them well, Yeah. like with biopsies and PSAs and so forth. And then active surveillance, I mean, it, yeah. it sounds, you know, um, it's like how invasive is it? But, uh, but is it invasive or is it? Yeah, good point. So <laughs> it is because biopsies are invasive. Yeah. They are. They're pl placing needles in the prostate periodically. But we know also that there are those patients, number one, that might not be good for surveillance. You know, they might come to us with a little high PSA. We call it PSA density also, a uh -huh. high PSA density. And maybe those patients shouldn't even have surveillance. We're trying to figure that out. Okay. But there are also ways to say, oh, these patients we can de-intensify. Because there is such, such a thing as maybe over-surveillance. Okay. In other words, too much surveillance, too many biopsies. And who are those patients? Again, maybe another take-home point might be, there are those patients who have prostate cancer, and we biopsy them on surveillance, and they're clean. The biopsies are clean, no cancer. That happens mm -hmm. at least 25% of the time. Well, those patients, they don't need biopsies maybe. We can de-intensify and not overly survey them. Right. And instead of active surveillance, maybe inactive surveillance, but it's still surveillance. Were there immediate questions that you were being asked after you s spoke this morning? I mean, what was, yeah. the, what was the main question people were interested in? I think a lot of questions were how far can we push it? Mm. In other words, I told you about that low grade cancer. Can we push it to higher grades? and start watching those because we might be over treating those. Okay. The answer, the short answer is yes, we can probably do active surveillance on patients who have a little bit higher Gleason grade. All right. But there are nuances of that that we're trying to dissect out and stay tuned is what I can say. I think we'll figure that question out more, but we have to be very cautious about those patients. Only in the kind of small higher grade cancers, only in those that have what we call low percent pattern four. The bottom line is, we're starting to push the envelope a little bit, and I think we should, because the side effects of therapy are real. Fantastic. Well, so yeah, nice thanks. to meet you, thanks. Dr. Daniel thanks Lin. So much. Thank you, thank you, and thanks enjoy so your stay. Thanks. Okay.